Hey guys, welcome back to Pharaoh Iron and Customs. This is Michael, and this week we're going to be back on the Bridgeport working on stoning the mill table and tramming the head in. Uh, also, in this video, I struggled a little bit with the sound on my 4K camera, so I do apologize for uh, that. Whenever the video starts, you may need to adjust your volume up so you can hear what I'm saying. I decided at the beginning of the year to improve my videos and just trying to improve the sound quality of the videos and uh, creating better content for you guys. So uh, thanks for watching and here is Stone in the Bridgeport Mill. Uh, so I went ahead and cleaned the mill table with just some brake clean and this is the non-carbonated brake uh, Sorry, non-chlorinated brake cleaner. I like non-chlorinated brake cleaner because it's flammable. And if you need to snort it in an engine, you know, just to check and see if you have a fuel-related issue, you can do so. Uh, but the other reason I like non-chlorinated brake cleaner is uh, if you're doing any welding and you burn chlorine, it uh, turns the phosgene gas. And as long as you got plenty of ventilation, you're fine. But if you don't, you can get sick. So um, today I'm stoning the mill. There's a, well, that's just a piece of crap that was stuck to it. Not stoning the mill table. This, I think it was 150 grit on this side and 250 or 300. I can't tell if y'all can see or not because of the camera, so it was 150 on this side and 250 on this side. So we'll get started, and I may switch it over to time lapse, because I don't know how long this is going to take. Just using some WD-40 for some lube. Soaking in the stone. Do a little bit on the table. Like I said, after I clean it up, you can really see this, the marks where they did the scraping. So. What we're going to do with this, and I need to, I've never done this, so I, I'm probably going to have to get my uh, uh, technique down pat. You're supposed to hold the stone like this, from what I understand. My hands are so big, that's not going to work. So, we're going to go on a figure eight pattern. <laughs> like I said, Thinking about it too much, I think. <laughs> I'm thinking about it way too much. I keep wanting to go in circles. I probably had a teacher or two that would tell you it was just because I didn't like to write or something. Um, and then I'm just going to flop from that direction and go back to this direction. Let's move the camera so I can see. And work my way back across. Let's see. Figure eight. Okay guys, I had intended on going to time lapse, but um, I thought I had uh, three batteries for this camera, but I've only got two batteries for this camera, so I'm going to get a couple more batteries. I mean, I've only got one battery for this camera. So the 
I got most of the rust off except for in the places where there are the scraping marks, which are you know lower than the the level of the mill table. And we can check this mill for flatness, table for flatness, and we may do that. But I expect for it to get a whole lot better. There's some deep gouges down on this end. For it to get a whole lot better, we'll have to send it out, have to pull it out and have it uh, 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 grinded flat with a stone. Maybe you could take a cut. I don't know. Just learn. Anyway, so I come back over, did the course side for probably 30 or 40 minutes and come back over with the fine grit for a couple of uh, passes. And uh, it looks pretty good. Like I said, I'd love for it to look better, but you know, it's an old mill. It's, if, you know, if you do research on this Bridgeport, it's an, an older machine. I'm not sure how old it is. So anyway, this is gonna go in the tool cabinet down here with the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, micrometers and gauges seems like a good place so I uh, went ahead and set up I've already done just a little bit of work on this Let's see, can we bring you in here zoom in a little bit all right so now this kit it comes with a little magnet and that's your reference point on your mill table where you're going to check to set your zero at and I'm not sure if this is off. I only zeroed at one time. As per normal, you'll want to bump your gauge a couple of times to make sure it doesn't move. I mean, and that's just on anything you do, checking rear ends or whatever. All of this plays in automotive, guys. Um, it really does. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this 180. Let's see, we need to be careful not to hit our dials when we cross across the bed. I think it's high enough that we're not going to. It may not be. I don't, didn't lower the bed, so it may not be high enough. All right. So, okay. This one is Showing out again by about 15, which is kind of alarming. All right, so we're going to go back to zero on this one. That magnet's got some pull. It's got to be a rare earth magnet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to turn the gauges back to where you can see them. Yes, sir. So they're already zeroed out. The gauge, gauges are zeroed, so we can drop the knee. And we're going to turn that. Oops. We need to run the table in. And you can do this with one. Uh, you can do this with one gauge. And what I did before was just set one to zero. Um, and something I want you to think about too is, is uh, something I figured out on this. All right. Is that when you start moving this, one is going to go up and one is going to go down. And they're going to intersect at a point and it's not going to be zero. Okay, guys. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly what happened there. So, um, to uh, trim in the mill head up and down, um, what you do is you loosen these three bolts. And I would suggest probably that top one, you don't loosen it as much, just enough that it can turn. You don't want to, you know, you want to have some tension on it so that the, so that the, uh, let's see, I'm going to see if I can get y'all in a position where y'all can still see and I can see what I'm doing. 
And if you'll watch this gauge, the um, the adjuster that says the battery's still dead. Damn it! All right, the adjuster's up here. I'm gonna try to get y'all some more juice, and we'll come back. Okay, guys. Um, I spent a little more time. And what I was going to say is you'll watch the, the needles and they will start chasing each other and they'll catch up and pass each other. And you just have to find the sweet spot. I've gone back out and re-zeroed the gauges just to get everything at zero. You'll want to be careful to make sure your dial indicators don't hit, get stuck in your slots as you come around. But if you watch, both gauges are staying. There's a couple of divots right through here. That one just dropped in a slot, so we need to make sure we pick it up so it clears the slot. Now this one's got to clear the slot. See if we can get you right on there. You see they are both, you know, in the same spot right at zero, one degree. So that means it's trammed this way. And I'll move y'all around as we come around. Y'all can keep an eye on that. And it'll drop back in the slot and we'll move y'all right to the other side and y'all can watch it come back around around we're up on this side we're down in the, the t slot we need to lift it up till we get on the mill and you can see we're still right at between half a degree and one degree so we're i mean not a degree but one foul we're about a half a thousandths out of tram. Um, I could probably play with it all day and I expect it depends on exactly what part of that table. Hey guys, yeah this new camera is kind of giving me a little bit of a fit. Um, so I think in the next episode I wanted to try to make some chips today and I was going to be the next episode was going to be cleaning up the rotary table because our uh, uh, the vice for the mill, the jaws, has been hit several times with uh, drill bits and chunked out and chipped out. So it needs some new vice jaws. And I kind of want to make the jaws for the vice myself. And I uh, want to make them in such a way that, um, I can't remember who it is, uh, Clutch, not Clutch. One of the vice companies has a slot milled in the top of the backmost jaw to put a stop in. And I kind of want to want to do that. that. That looks like something that at some point I might would really need and would make things you know slightly easier if you're milling multiple parts. So either on the next video we're going to clean up the jaw, I mean the vise, or we're going to clean up the rotary table. And um, this you know, these, what I'm doing with the mill is going to lead into working on the cars because I need the mill to make the parts for the 50. I don't know that I'm going to need it for anything on the Volkswagen, but if I get it set up where I can use it and it comes in, in the time arises that I need to make a bracket and I want to cut it out on the mill out of something and make it, you know, super nice or whatever, I'm sitting here learning how to use this mill learning what the tools are, learning the tooling, getting them, you know, making sure the mill is maintained and ready to make stuff. And we'll have it at our disposal when we get back into working on the cars. I have uh, several projects in the pipeline right now. I'm trying to finish the dog pen for my dogs um, so that they'll have a place to stay and be safe while we're, you know, if we go out of town, go down to the boat, go on vacation, whatever. And uh, you know, still having a few health issues. And like I said, we may get into that one day. I don't know. Um, but uh, you know, we're working through it. And I'll try my best for next week to have some uh, Volkswagen content. Anyway, y'all have a great day. Don't forget to. Uh, Subscribe if you have not. That helps the channel out tremendously. Also, likes and comments. It helps the channel.
channel out tremendously to pump us up in that algorithm so that more people get to see the video. Anyway, y'all have a great day.